A young hiker trapped for six days, a hundred feet below ground. His arm crushed under this 800 pound boulder. I dropped down here and the boulder came and it smashed my left hand here and it smashed my right hand up here. He was invisible, alone, his food and water running out. Hundreds of miles away, his mother was determined to find her son. My son has been reported missing since last Thursday night. With death closing in, he made a heartbreaking tape for his family. Whoever finds this, please make an attempt to get it to them. And then, a bold decision to free himself by cutting off his own arm. I said to myself, here we go, Aaron, you're in it now. And I took my knife and... Tonight, with Tom Brokaw, this astonishing young man returns to where it all happened. This is emotional for me. I can't imagine what it's like for you. <laughs> the place where he sank to the depths of despair. And at first, I just carved the four letters of my name. A-R-O-N. I wrote R-I-P. Right there. But also the place where near death became a rebirth. The happiest moment of my life. <laughs> the exclusive story of an extraordinary escape. Desperate days in Blue John Canyon, reported by Tom Brokaw. Good evening from Canyon Country in southeastern Utah. This wild and beautiful place is irresistible to people with a sense of adventure. Last year was the destination of a young man named Aaron Ralston. On a beautiful spring day, he set out for a hike through the Canyonlands National Park, not far from here, for some personal relaxation and solitude. It became a journey that would take Ralston from panic to despair, finally to hope. A journey in which he would be forced to do something the rest of us find almost impossible to imagine. Because he had a video camera with him tonight, you'll relive some of that journey starting with a shockingly intimate moment when this young man was convinced that he was going to die. My name's Aaron Ralston. My parents are down on Larry Ralston of Englewood, Colorado. Whoever finds this, please make an attempt to get it to them. Be sure of it. I would appreciate it. It was more than one year ago that 27-year-old Aaron Ralston set out alone for an afternoon hike in this rugged and remote canyon in Utah's southeastern desert. You may not recognize his name or his face, but chances are you do remember his incredible story. Ralston became trapped in this remote slot canyon, his right arm and his spirit crushed beneath the enormous weight of this boulder. It was the most intense pain I've ever felt in my life. He was so completely hidden from sight that searchers would never spot him, and so far from civilization that his cries for help would never be heard. I thought I was going to die. Food, water, and hope were in short supply. It was a very dark time for me. His only real chance for survival, a dull pocket knife, and whatever courage he could summon to use it. It came down to whether I could cut through my arm or not, and I couldn't do it. Six agonizing days later, Aaron Ralston succumbed to despair and prepared to die all alone in this canyon. What is so remarkable is that he lived to tell about it. It is the ultimate survivor's tale, one man's will to live and his triumph over death, as chronicled in his new book. You know how the story ends, but the only way to truly understand it is to see it through his eyes. Tonight, we join Aaron Ralston for a remarkable and emotional journey as he returns for the first time to the canyon that was almost his tomb. He chose the date, the six month anniversary of the accident that cost him his right arm, recovered enough now to face the memories that haunt him and hopefully to find some peace. It was a day a lot like this. It's totally clear skies, nice weather. Spring was exploding in southeastern Utah that April weekend last year. The cactus were in bloom, the desert was coming back to life. 
Does this seem familiar to you? Do you remember when you were coming down through this passage? I do. I was by myself again here, pulled my headphones back over my ears and was listening to some, some fish music and was, was walking along, enjoying the sunshine. Ralston lived for weekends such as this, wandering and exploring discovery and self-discovery, testing nature's boundaries and pushing his own limits. He had set out from his home in Aspen, Colorado two days earlier, Thursday, April 24, 2003. His plan was to drive west, guidebook in hand, wherever the wind might take him. That turned out to be southeastern Utah, Canyonlands National Park. Canyonlands is quite literally the middle of nowhere, more than 500 square miles of wild and primitive desert, nothing as far as the eye can see, and then some. By Friday night, Ralston was camped near a remote trail in the middle of the desert, some 300 miles from home, more than 30 miles from the nearest paved road. Saturday morning, he headed into the park on his mountain bike. He took only enough supplies for the afternoon, intending to return to camp later that night. At any point before you get to where the accident occurred, did you have any anxiety, any sense of doom, any any sense of peril? It was quite the opposite. I, I was actually just, I think, feeling settled into the the rhythm of, of moving at my own pace, just feeling the sand moving beneath my feet and the sun on my neck is, is the reason I came out here. He was also looking forward to what was coming next. Blue John Canyon, one of the park's most unique features. Blue John is what is known as a slot canyon. From the ground, it's almost invisible. From above, it appears to be little more than a deep crack cutting through the desert terrain, but inside, an almost surreal environment with twisting serpentine walls that can stretch hundreds of feet deep. A place a solitary hiker looking to lose himself in another world could find himself lost forever. A lot of people say, why go alone? Why take that chance? In a case like this, it's just the chance to be alone with your thoughts, to get to that point where you're just experiencing what, what there is to, to feel and, and to be in the moment here. It, I mean, it's kind of in a way selfish, but it, uh, it heightens the experience of what, what there is, just that rawness. Part of the appeal is testing yourself as well, isn't it? I, I think so. There's no one else to rely on uh, when you're in a difficult spot. There's no other person to bounce your decisions off of. So the, the self-reliance becomes a bigger part of the experience when you're by yourself. In the next few days, Aaron Ralston's self-reliance would be tested in a way he never bargained for. Aaron Ralston wasn't looking for high-risk adventure in the Utah desert that Saturday morning. All he wanted Just was a few days of weekend R&R. By early afternoon, he traveled almost 20 miles from his camp to the entrance of Blue John, a slot canyon he'd read about in his guidebook. He planned to spend the next few carefree hours exploring, but everything was about to change. We hike the same route in. It is six months to the day, to the hour even, of his accident. So, here we are, this canyon. The walls of Blue John narrow and close, and then suddenly we're on top of it, a 15-foot drop into the mouth of the slot canyon. I might flail around and look kind of graceless, but, you know, that's how it works. So. The last time he was here, the descent was second nature to Ralston. This time, will be more difficult. Hmm. We don't have to do anything here you don't want to now. Yeah. Hmm. I can put a rope on you. I might take it. Yeah. I think we'll just okay. Don't worry about it. One second, let me think about this one more time. No, I really don't want you to break your leg here. <laughs> Hey, why don't you come up and spot him? We brought along professional guides for the safety of our crew to spot us and rig safety ropes along the way. But Aaron is intent on making his own way through Blue John without assistance. He asked us to honor his request. Watch out. I'm going to drop right there. Nice. 
Like I said, it wasn't going to be graceful. <laughs> the first obstacle cleared. We head into the canyon. After only a few steps, the landscape begins to change dramatically. So now you begin to encounter some obstacles. What rocks that are falling down here, like this one, right? Yeah, chunks of the, the upper strata uh, break off and fall into the canyon. And so this is a chalk stone. Chalk stones are boulders wedged between canyon walls, usually washed in by torrential flash floods. You might have to crawl under them, or you might have to crawl over them, or they might be wedged in a spot where, uh, where you have to climb down them uh, on the other side. The fact is that they all seem pretty solid, right? Yeah, and these, these are so large that you wouldn't expect to ever see one of these move. Do you remember coming under this? I do, I do remember. I kind of limboed. Uh, I had to get down on my, my hands and knees and crawl. Thank God it didn't move. <laughs> How are you feeling coming back here? I have to admit I'm, I'm a little bit nervous just in anticipation of what I might feel, but it's, uh, I guess, a little anxious. Well, you know, in its rawest form, it's a kind of a spiritual place, isn't it? And then it's, when you go through what you went through, yeah. it becomes a kind of temple. It's, it's a holy place for me, for sure. OK, let's go down. Lou John continues to meander downward. We are only a few hundred feet in, and already the wall stretch three stories high. We're completely hidden from sight. Are we getting close? We're definitely getting close. Just then, he stopped short. Twelve feet below is the scene of the accident. The first time he's seen it since the day he narrowly escaped with his life. You said before you didn't know what you would think when you got here. Yeah. It, uh, standing here a few moments ago, I, just, I started to go a little teary eyed over just seeing and seeing where it was and how pathetic it was. Um, just such a pitiable situation. And I can see the stains on the wall and, and I know what those stains are from. And then I left those there. I did that. We go down there and uh, go through some of what you went through. It won't, it won't be the same. No. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Well, let's not say anything until we get down there. <laughs> Make sure these boulders okay. don't move this time. Okay. <laughs> as difficult as it was to see this spot again for the first time, to actually climb back down into the hole that almost became his grave is even more traumatic. Aaron asked to go first, alone. Yeah, this is emotional for me. I can't imagine what it's like for you. There it is. Almost instinctively, he assumes the position he was first trapped in. I gotta tell you, this is so much worse than I thought it was gonna be in terms of the solitude of it and the sense of utter isolation. You were in a hole in every sense of the word. Yeah, I mean, with this, with the chalk stones up above and behind me here, it, it, you know, restricted the ceiling, the openness of the sky was 15 feet wide and only 30 feet long that I could see. That was my window. Are you ready for me to come down? Yeah, I can help you. 